So we've seen by the fundamental theorem of line integrals and the fact that the electric field being the gradient of a potential function V is conservative, uh, that we have uh, the line integral of the electric field around any path is equal to the difference in the voltages uh, over that path. Um, and from that, we conclude that if we trace the circuit in any direction, the sum of the voltage drops is zero. And why we talk about voltage drops uh, is simply because when we get down to this equation, we have the source voltage here on one side of the equation and the voltage drops on the other side. Now, we discussed all that in the preceding video, but this equation can then be written if we write Q as dQ dt as Q prime, indicating the derivative of Q with respect to T, and divide through by R, we have this differential equation. Now, we're going to talk mostly about the solutions to this equation, but let me quickly uh, invoke something that not everybody needs to understand. Actually, nobody needs to completely understand it, but if you know the differential equations, um, it's very handy to know, so I'm going to bring in that context for those who are prepared for it. And again, it's not a prerequisite of the course, so there's no penalty for not knowing this, but there's a reward for knowing it. <coughs> this equation, in the case where the source voltage is constant, then uh, it becomes an equation of the form Q prime plus BQ equals D, where B is the reciprocal of RC, so that BQ is Q over RC, and D is source voltage over R, uh, the right-hand side. And those are all constant if the source voltage is constant, and of course, the resistance is not changing in time, and so forth. Okay, well, this is a linear homogeneous equation first order, there's an integrating factor. Uh, it's, I said homogeneous, it's not homogeneous because of the D. There's an integrating factor, E to the BT, uh, so that the equation becomes uh, QE to the BT prime equals DE to the BT. Uh, and, uh, yeah, okay, we can say that. Uh, so that if we integrate both sides of this, um, the integral of QE to the BT prime is QE to the BT. Integrating E to the BT, we get 1 over B, E to the BT, so the integral of this side is D over B, E to the BT. Q is then D over B <coughs> plus AE to the negative BT, where A is the integration constant I forgot to mention over here. And of course, this step comes from this step if you divide through by e to the bt. Now this, sh th this will be very familiar for those who are prepared, and if it's not very familiar, you probably don't want to worry about it right now unless you're really interested. In which case you can look up linear homogeneous, linear non-homogeneous first order equations with constant coefficients. Okay. Um, anyhow, Q is there for this, and then letting B equal 1 over R, C, D equal V, S over R, we get this form for the Q function. And then if we go to this circuit and imagine there's a switch here and the capacitor is initially uncharged and we close that switch at time t equals zero, then our condition is that Q, the charge on the capacitor, is zero when t equals zero. So we have Q of zero equals zero. And if we plug that in here, that apply, implies that CVS plus AE to the negative T over RC equals zero when T equals zero. That gives us CVS plus A equals zero so that A is negative CVS so that this solution becomes Q equals CVS factoring out the CVS that we get when we put this in for A times one minus E to the negative T over RC. Now you can't read that RC there. Uh, but I've written it out a little more neatly over here, that same solution. Okay, and there's another, for differential equation students, another case. Uh, if we have, and ev everybody, well, actually, uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain the case and the solution. Then in, in the next video, I'll explain what's going on here without talking about the solution. Now, the solution in this case is even easier. Okay, the case is, we've got a switch here. And the capacitor is, let's say, initially uncharged. We throw the switch over here so that the source charges up the capacitor. Okay, then after a while, when we're sure the capacitor is fully charged, or, you know, is fully charged, uh, it, it, you know, it's within a negligible difference of being fully charged, uh, we take the switch and we throw it from here to here which takes the source out of the circuit because current can't flow from here to here unless the source is connected to something else. Okay, And now uh, the charge on the capacitor will flow back through the resistor so that positive, or, well, the, the, the charge in the capacitor will equalize by the drift of charge through the circuit. And what you have then, when the switch hits this point, if that's your t equals zero, uh, then at t equals zero, we're going to say the charge on the capacitor is whatever the voltage is times whatever the capacitance is. Or we'll just say that the charge on the capacitor is q naught. We don't even have to bring the voltage in. We just figure out what that'll be. We'll say that's our initial charge. Okay? And the equation then, with the we only have the capacitor and the resistor in the circuit. It's just going to be Q prime, which is your current, okay, plus Q over RC equals zero because we've taken the source out. There is no source. The only two voltages, we have the voltage drop across the capacitor and the voltage drop across the resistor. That has to add up to zero. And, uh, yeah, that, well, I'm not going to explain at this point why that works, you know, why, why the voltage, uh, the voltages turn out to be equal and opposite. It's pretty easy to understand. But that's going to give us the equation Q prime plus Q over RC equals zero. That's first order linear non-homogeneous, very easy to solve, and the solution is Q of T is some constant times E to the negative T over RC. And if the charge is Q naught at t equals zero, then that constant has to be Q naught. So right there is our current function for this case, where we start with a charge capacitor and connect it to a resistor without a source. Okay. So that's the differential equation approach. And if you know the differential equations, uh, that can save you a lot of trouble and give you a little deeper understanding.